you. What's up? What's up with this right here? I'm trying to get out of that baby face a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Okay, welcome back everybody to the Home Inspection Whisperer Show. Today I have a family friend actually. He is Clayton Bailey with Green Scene Home Inspections and he's been around me for a while. We actually don't talk a whole lot, but I know he talks to the my dad's side of things because they're <laughs> competitors. You know, y'all have, uh, you have your business and him and y'all are both in the Dallas area, but you know, Texas and Dallas and Houston, there's no such thing as competitors. Y'all nope. both could have like teams of 20 and it wouldn't matter. It would know? not matter. <laughs> it wouldn't matter. Yeah, so the biggest thing I wanted to get into, before we even start the whole smart home thing or introducing you, I need to name my audience. I've been reading this book. It's called Expert Secrets, and I know everyone else, like, they name their audience, and I just couldn't think of, like, a clever name. You know, do you, I, I was thinking something along the lines of, like, the home inspection whisperers or the whisperers. I mean, do you, what do you think? <sighs> What do you think? So, man, yeah, because you've got a group of home inspectors who are trying to be home inspection whispers, and so it's kind of speak softly and carry a big stick as far as I'm concerned when you're saying home inspection whispers, because like I'm full of knowledge, but I'm not going to let you know that I'm full of knowledge. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm going to slowly kind of put that out there. So Right. You know, and one of the things that uh, Mary and I were talking about, because, you know, like these pe coaching people, they get these booths and stuff. And we didn't like that idea where we have to go to conferences and get booths. And we thought it would be kind of funny if they're home inspection whisperers, because, you know, you find out through us through word of mouth, you know, you find out that there's a home inspection whispers thing from y'all whispering the name. Yep. So you're like, this is what this is. This is what this is. And it's funny, like your, <laughs> your dad and myself, like the two of us were, um, when I first started, he was, he was teaching a class and Brendan was in there and like, you know, and I went up to him and I was like, Hey, I'm at this point right now. And my wife is going to quit her job because she had a job for 16 years. She was a catering director of a, a big restaurant chain. And I went to him and he just kind of was like, yeah, yeah. Okay. All right. Sure. And, um, it was like six months later, I called him. I was like, Hey, I want some help with these rapid remarks and show me like how whisper works and all that kind of fun stuff. And so like, I just, he was like, why don't you just come to my house and like, we'll just go over it. So I brought my wife with me and, um, man, we've just been, besties ever since so I look, yeah. at your, I look at your dad as one of my best friends and mentors and when I have major problems like he unfortunately he's the one that gets the call and I'm always having to <laughs> preface it that and when I text I was like hey you got time for a, a quick call and I promise it's not bad news this time <laughs> <laughs> that's funny. you know that's also about these multi-inspector firms or just home inspectors in general you know you will find the key group of guys or teams in we all just really do stick together and we take care of each other about like, and nothing really is reciprocated once you hit like a certain level, you hit a certain level, what you learn, you can teach my father and what my father can learn, you teach him and then you'll just start bouncing ideas off of uh, each other. So yeah, but we're not naming the audience, you know, <laughs> that's, that's our ADD kicking in there. It's just the <laughs> shiny things and squirrels and everything just took yeah. over there. Yeah. Uh, the whispers is just kind of money like yeah. whispers that's what i was thinking i was like all right welcome back home inspection whispers you know instead of saying yeah. welcome back to the sh the home inspection whisper show we're talking to the whisperers you know welcome back <laughs> thanks for listening to me because i am you know we're, i'm crazy <laughs> i'm crazy it's like here we go here's the thing yeah all right so well I think I might stick with that, but I'm going to throw it back onto the audience too. Just if y'all think of a name that's better than that, you know, let me know, shoot me a message, join the, uh, the, the private Facebook group and then, you know, and shoot your, shoot your messages in there. So I actually wanted to get into you a little bit. And so I bought, you know, when I first met you, I think you only had like a, a team of two. And I think that was like six years ago. And now it sounds like I looked at your Facebook a little bit and it looked like you have a pretty decent sized team and your yeah. wife is in the business and you have a marketing person. So yeah. like you got, you got a, a, a full on 
business going on now. Yes, it's funny. Like I started uh, in 2008, 2009, and it was the worst time to start a home inspection business because it was the crash and everybody was talking about short sales and it was just awful. And here I am going talking about, let me do an energy audit at the same time as your inspection. And all the agents are like, get out of here. I don't <laughs> never want to use you. I will never use you if you're talking that noise. Um, so it was a lot of trial and error, you know, as entrepreneurs, we try to figure out what's going to give us that edge, like what's going to give us that thing that puts us outside of our competition. And, and as you know, you got to fail forward and fail fast and fail often and humbly fail. <laughs> you know, I, I, I didn't actually, I've never said fail fast, but that actually makes perfect sense. You know, like I, whenever I fail, I don't even look back at it. I'm just like, eh, I failed you know, yeah. I'm done, you know, I'll move on to the next thing. And I literally just forget that it happened. I don't forget my mistake. I just forget that it happened and just move forward. I'm like, well, move on. Just move on. One of the best things I was probably 18, 19 years old. And the, I went to one of those like motivational speakers and my boss made me go because I was selling this product at the time. And I was like, well, whatever, I'm not going to go to this. And he's like, no, it's mandatory. You have to go. But it was Zig Ziglar. Oh, really? And I got to hear him speak and he was just such a great charismatic guy. And the, just the two things that I picked up from that at a young age was burn the past daily. So whatever happened, that was yesterday. Today is a new day. Don't dwell on the past. If you dwell on the past, it will just eat you alive. And in the home inspection business, <laughs> you can't dwell on it because you got houses tomorrow and you can't think about like what happened yesterday. All you can do is try to save face and, own up to whatever you did and keep trucking on, you know? Yeah. So, uh, so what's the size of your team now? So we've got eight people on board, uh, two marketing reps. And then, yeah, my wife's working on the front office side of things. And then, you know, I think we share the same size call center team. Oh, okay. Yeah. So you're part, you're part of ACC too. Yes. yes. We got the red team. You're on the red team, right? Uh, I don't know. I don't know what color I am. Is it, do you got Trevor? Is Trevor no, take it? Okay. Then no. no, you might be on my father's side then. No, I'm on your yeah. dad's team. Yeah. 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 So we're both on the on the red team that's over there. So and we that's, had been them with them before. Um kind of moved away and then we ended up coming back to them. Just didn't work out with the other, you know, call center. Yeah. We have kind of a I'm not saying that we're high maintenance as a home inspection company, <laughs> but we pay attention to the details and, and I feel like if you let it fall through the cracks, you're losing leads, you're losing inspections. And so you constantly have to pay attention to like what's going on and who's there and nope, where our schedule's not full tomorrow and I need to make sure that it's full, you know? Yeah. yeah so, you know, that it, I pay attention to the details all the time. And like whenever my phone's not ringing, even though it was like the slow time and I still expect my phone to like ring, you know? And so try, I'll be calling Trevor all the time. Be like, Hey, how many calls did we lose today? You know, like, you know <laughs> like, what, what's going on? So it's, it's okay to be high maintenance at some point, but you know, yeah. the, where I hear a lot of the people fail is more into the, what they do is, is they come in and they, they like yell at their call team. and stuff. Yeah. And that's not a, a good way to but, do it. But the thing is, it's like, I was talking to someone the other day and you know, these, this call team, they're your gatekeepers. You yeah. Know? Man, my green screen's acting kind of crazy right now. That's uh, all good. <laughs> so, you know, they, uh, they're they your call team. I mean, why would you get mad at your at your gatekeeper? You know, you, you all need to grow as a, as a team. But anyways, yeah, so, yeah, ACC is great. And by the way, if y'all use ACC and you drop Chris Murphy or the Home Inspection Whisperer name, they wave, up your, they wave your startup fees. And that was not an intentional name drop. I actually have no oh, idea. Oh wow! <laughs> yeah, I didn't like even. A little ninja yeah. call to action there. Yeah, I didn't even know that uh, Clayton uh, used ACC too. So, <laughs> so you have six. It sounds like you have six full time inspectors. Uh, yes, about to be. There's with me. It will be eight. Okay, so eight. So you actually uh, do full time inspecting still right now too. So what I do is if somebody asks for me, cause there's always that person that's like, it's yep. a doctor, a lawyer, an engineer, or whatever, and they just have to have Clayton. So what I do is I, I go and I send one of the other guys with me and I kind of use that time to do like a quality control moment to make sure they're doing it the way that we want to do it. The client sees me and sees my face. 
Um, but I don't take anything additional out of that inspector's pocket. I just go, it's just one of those deals. It's like, all right, time to pay the piper. But I use, I use it as an opportunity to kind of make sure the guys are doing it the way that we want it done. Honestly, uh, that's how I do it too. And I don't split commissions or anything weird, you know, and I, and I do what I'm, I just make sure uh, literally the same exact thing. I just make sure that it gets done properly. So, you know, that I have a very, um, sort of Richard Branson approach. If you take care of the people that take care of your customers, that's your first line of defense. And so if you, you got to take care of your staff. And so whether it be the call center or whether it be your marketing person or whether it be your inspectors or whatever it is, like I want them to feel like I got their back and I'm taking care of them no matter what all the time. And honestly, like it builds a, just a really, really solid team. I mean, ever since I really started doing that and I described our mission and what we got going on and our, the way we do inspections and the why, why we do inspections this way, it, the, t- the team just really like joins together and it builds like a community that way. Yeah. So it's, especially if you got their back, then they're going to have the other inspectors back. It's like a trickling effect, you yeah. know, like it, it works really well. So uh, the next question I have for you is what kind of services do you uh, do? Are you just home inspections? Oh, no, we're pretty much everything that you could think of. Uh, So we're commercial uh, phase inspection, mold, lead paint. uh, Oh, wow. You do the, do you have that lead paint gun? The whole thing. It's not me. So those are the the only two that I third party out are the lead and the the mold guy. But I was lucky to partner up with a a mold guy who has his own lab here in, um, he's actually in Denton. And typically when mold, you know, you're in an option period and you only have so much time to test for whatever it is. And so he can give you same day mold results. And so I always like outsourcing that to him, but we also do energy assessments, energy audits, blower doors, duct blasting. Dang, um, Dang you really like all that got, kind of fun stuff, man. You, you could almost train up, open up school with all that stuff. Jesus. Yes. Yeah. So, you know, it's funny, like how you brought up, uh, you know, just like how you think we think alike a lot, you know, you run into people and you just know you think alike is how you said that you found this mold guy and you're lucky because he does this stuff same day, but you're not lucky because you found that guy, you know, <laughs> you, if I had a vision of how you did it, cause it's probably how I just did that. So I'm getting into the stucco right now, right. Yeah. And I'm doing my market research into stucco and literally I just Googled stucco and I called, I swear I called like 25 numbers. It was like, call this number. Oh, if you didn't pick up on the fourth ring, not my problem. Next, didn't yeah. call my fourth ring, not my problem. Didn't call up on the phone ring, not my problem. And then finally I got like down to like list 18. If anyone can come here and pick up their phone in Houston and knows how to repair stucco, you're going to be rich. You're going to win. Yeah. Because like the top 18 people didn't yeah. even answer their phone. Like, so, <laughs> so I made it down to like 18 and it ends up being like, kind of like his dad and just him and he just joined the business. He picked up the phone right away. I had a conversation. I was like, Hey, this is what I'm looking for. I don't know if you know how the real estate market works, but it happens fast. And so what I need you to do is I want to build a, I want to sit down with you. I build a report so good. You don't even have to show up and then you can give cost estimates. He's like, well, that's not really how we work, but we like to show up. But if you think you can do that, I might be interested. I'm like, all right, I'm going to stop making phone calls. Now you and I are going to sit down and uh, <laughs> have a talk. Is that okay? And he was like, yes. So I'm just letting you know, Clayton oh. just didn't find this guy. What actions he took made him find it. Yeah, yeah. that is exactly what that's is exactly what it was. You call this one? No, nope, you don't do that. No, nope, no, nope, you don't do that. No, nope, you do this. So you just near yeah. process of elimination. Yeah, process. And honestly, like if this guy gives me a weird vibe whatsoever, he's dead to me, and I start all over again. You know, like so. It's just like you don't just get things to kind of work. You find the people. I really from this book traction, you get the people in the right seats, even though they're not in your business, those still could be in the right seat. And if you get them that, you know, your business just works better. So you have a good partnership with this uh, mold guy. So I thought that was funny. It was like the perfect thing to bring up. See, this is why I'm talking about this podcast. Like it's not planned and you get like gold nuggets like that. Some people don't even know. Like that's how you have to operate. Yeah. Funny. So, um, what a, a good question, you know, I'd like to bring these up too, is whenever you produce a home inspection report, 
do y'all complete it on site or do y'all go home and do it? Uh, we, I have all my inspectors do it on site. Okay. Um, now they may go home and like brush something up or finish it, but for the most part, I give them tablets. I want them to do everything there on site. Um, and it's just how we operate. I, I find that there's fewer errors <laughs> that way. And then the guys can go home and enjoy their families and be with wife and kids and not have to worry about staying up late and doing things. And I, I really want people to have that family time. I don't want to, I don't want them to feel like they're getting shorted out. That's why they're part of you. You know, you're, it's your job to go out there and hustle and be, you know, nuts yeah. out there. You know, it's, it's not theirs. And that's actually like what I tell them in the interview process is like, Hey, I know that the way I operate is not like a normal human. And it's like, I don't expect you to operate like that. This is what I expect. And, you know, yeah. and I tell them, like, I just want you to do your job, do it really well when you're there. And then whenever you go home, that's your time. But you do need to pick up the phone because there could be a fire. Because real estate, right. you know how the real estate market works. I know exactly how it's it works. Like, when there's a fire, you know, when there's a fire, you got to smother it fast or, or you're going to end up like Australia. You know, yeah. like, <laughs> so... All right, cool. So on site, you know, that's how we operate too. And I like how you said it brings fewer errors. I really think it does. I've read everyone's comments on the forums. They're like, well, I don't think that you're giving them a quality report, but like I review everything on site. And if you forget something, guess what? That software tells you right then and there. And you just go knock it out. Like, yeah. you're like oh man, I forgot to do the dishwasher. I forgot to turn off the oven. Like you're going over and you're reviewing the oven and you're like, oh man, that thing's still running. You knock it out right then and there. You know, you you just you don't have. A so you you and I are very similar, and I, and I don't know that if you have this ability or not, but I have the ability to where someone can call me with it's at least within a year, and as long as you're telling me the house, I may not remember the street. Um, if you can tell me which way the house faced. And what was the major thing that was wrong with the house? I'm going to auto recall like everything about that house, but most people can't do that. And inspectors, when they get out there and they're doing the thing, as soon as you walk out that front door, you get in your car, you're in traffic, you're listening to the radio, you've already filled your mind with all this other stuff. And if you tried to go home and write your report, you're like, was it in this bedroom or was it in that bedroom? Or, or this or, house or that house? You yeah. Know, like so you can't, you got to do it on site. It's yeah. just the best way to do it. Yeah, it, it is the best way to do it. And guess what? Your clientele loves it because real estate agents, whenever they walk out the door and they get that ding noise and they're like, holy cow, the report's already here. Guess what? I already crushed my competition by like 24 hours. So yeah. I mean, catch up. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, so the next thing is, is I, I, one of the things that like I've, I, you know, I watch you on Facebook and whatnot and I dig your marketing style. You know, yours is like a, you brand yourself the same way every time, you know, you got the green sunglasses, you got like, you wear crazy clothes and stuff. And like, just, I mean, I'm not as crazy, but I still have the same brand. Like when people see me, <laughs> they see the blue sunglasses, the blue shirt, you know, the, uh, two yeah. of my, the same khaki pants. So like you do really good at job branding yourself. And some people might think it's a little wacky, but I think it's genius. And people, you know, so what is your full style? You know, like what is your, your process on branding like that? And if you're going to break it down to one word, well, actually that would be two words, but it's one animal and it's peacocking. Yes. <laughs> so yeah. you're just peacocking. And when you show up to a big event and everyone's dressed up to the nines and tuxedos and everyone's all fancy and you walk in and you're in, you know, some sort of thing, you just, you're naturally the one that gets noticed and you're naturally the one that's like, who, who is that guy? It's yeah. like, oh, that's, that's the, uh, that's Clayton. He's the inspector. And yep. they kind of look at you like inspector. <laughs> <laughs> then you're like yes here's what it is here's what's going on I let me go introduce you yeah. show up looking like this okay yeah. i promise <laughs> you, you you have to be a little brave to do you know like confidence and stuff and i've seen i've seen even your marketing one time you did like a karaoke thing and you were like in a wig and you're running around the bar i was like god that's you know i'm not that brave <laughs> <laughs> brave or stupid right <laughs> Brave yeah. or stupid. Yeah. But, so but I honestly, came... agents love it. Like if I was there and I was a home inspector and you did that, I'd be like, man, I might as well leave now. You know, he, he won. Yeah. You, you won. Yeah. 
it's it's like the I, and, I, and I hate to say that I just it feels good to crush your competition. It's not that it feels good, but when you go to a meeting and you put on a meeting and like for like I teach a lot, so I teach a lot of different classes and. I'm teaching, there's a room full of people and there's some home inspectors that are also trying to market to the same group of people that I'm marketing to, but I'm doing the presentation and I'm wearing this outfit. I kind of feel bad for these other inspectors that are showing up because they're like, man, I shouldn't have even showed up this morning. You know, it's just like, <laughs> you're just crushing it, you know? Yeah. And it's just charismatic. What happens is, is that you dress up like this and people want to take selfies with you and they want to take pictures with you because you've got, they can post it on their Instagram or they can put it on their okay. Facebook. Or it works. It just, it it's a, it's a waterfall, man. <laughs> yeah. I get invited to all the cool parties. Every title company wants me to come to their party. They're like, yeah, come with the pants, come on and bring it. Let's have fun. And so, because they know that my audience, I'm going to brag and tag to all my other brokerages. And so it's just a big that's, circle. That's cool. Yeah. You know, that's how you mentioned it where, I think whenever I first got in the industry, my father, he's like, no, you need to dress, you know, like them or something. I know he likes to dress up nice and stuff, but me, I was like, I'm a home inspector. So I literally wear this. I have two uniforms. I have this uniform and then my gym clothes. That's it. That's all I wear. <laughs> so if yeah. I'm, I'm a home inspector or I'm a bum, you know, that's it. So like, yeah. And so I go to these events and I, I throw on my home inspection uniform, put all my stuff. And when people see me, they literally just see Chris, the home inspector. I've been out of my uniform, walked to an open house. I was kind of dressed like a bum. There's an agent literally standing right in front of me. I was like, oh, who do you use as a home inspection company? Mary was talking to her. She's like, oh, I, I use Chris Murphy all the time. I, that's how much of a bum I look. I was standing right in front of her. <laughs> so so we, didn't, we didn't say anything. We're just like, all right, well, here you go. Here's our card. You know, Mary handed the card and, and then, you know, I walked out, but I thought that's funny. So yeah, <laughs> I dig that branding stuff. So, um, so what we want, the whole purpose of this podcast, we're like a little bit into it now. I don't even know how long it is, but it doesn't matter. You wanted to sh talk about uh, smart home devices, right? Yes. Yeah. So you have like a, a presentation slideshow. So for the audience that's listening, if you go to YouTube, you can come in and see his slideshows a little bit. He's going to cruise through them a little bit. And then you're going to show us some smart home devices and teach us a little bit about it, right? Yeah, absolutely. So, it, you know, Texas uh, Realtor Magazine, just like it was on the front page cover about smart home devices and um, should you be recording your clients in the house and should you be using that information and it's it's illegal actually you cannot record with audio um someone without their consent and so the reason all this started um i'm one of the with the one of the big realtor associations up here and we did a spring industry update and, and my idea was to hey let's talk about smart homes and let's do this so what i did is i filled the stage with um it was at the addison convention center and i had a realtor um, an attorney, a builder, uh, and sort of that tech person on stage all at once. And we just kind of shot all the questions out there. Like, here's all the stuff that's coming out. Here's all the stuff that builders are using. The lawyer got up there and talked his, you know, lingo and verbiage. And so that's what we're going to go through in this little slideshow that we're about to, uh, get through. But as inspectors, man, we don't know nothing. We don't know anything about it other than, hey, I can't test the sprinklers because it's one of those smart things. So good luck. <laughs> yeah, it has like that circle ring. That. Yeah, it's that circle ring on it with no buttons on it. And you're like, what the hell? And there, some of the garage door openers are connected to it. I don't run across it too much, but I know some of my inspectors take pictures and I'm like sitting there Googling it for them to <laughs> try to figure it out. But you're right. You know, most of us don't know. I'd say 90, 95% of us probably don't know anything about smart home devices. So yeah, we need to know about this stuff. So I'm going to kind of run through slideshow. Let me know when you want me to start oh, yeah. that. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, fire it up. All right, I'm going to hit the share screen button here. Yeah, so um, yeah. So what happened was is Clayton reached out to me and then uh, he was just like, hey, you know, I, I built these comments and I, I have a lot of smart home devices and he might be teaching through RETS here coming up uh, shortly. That's my father's school. And he's going to, he's going to teach home inspectors about uh, smart home devices. So he's going to bring up this uh, slideshow. He's going to kind of give a, a small, this isn't what his class is going to, this is going to be like the baseline for his class, but 
you know, for the home inspection uh, class, I'm assuming it's going to be a lot more detailed. Yeah. So this one, the slideshow that you're about to see, realize that it's for real estate agents and it's okay. kind of geared towards real estate agents, but it's the same devices that we have to talk about and we have to deal with. So it's the same, same stuff. Uh, this one's kind of geared more towards real estate. So smart homes, uh, I'm going to thumb through my slideshow here and let's see, you're going to let me flip to the next screen. There it goes. Um, so there's like definition of smart home and I don't know if I'm covering that up with this other little screen or not, if you can see my full screen. I, I got you. Man. Um, I shoot it. Okay. So smart home is a term commonly defined in a residence uh, and it could be appliances, lighting, heating, air conditioning, TVs, computers, entertainment, audio, video systems, security systems, cameras, uh, that are capable of communicating with one another and it can be controlled remotely by a time schedule from any room in the house, as well as remotely from any location in the world. So, so quick, quick story. I had a, um, we were doing a 13,000 square foot house, big, big house. And it was um, kind of the same time of day where the sun is coming down and the, the, the dining room and the sunlight was just pouring through and uh, we're sitting there doing the thing and it's just gorgeous marble like dining room table and the buyer's agent just gets on her phone and she's like, doo -doo 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 -doo. and she's like, all right, I just texted the listing agent to see if they could drop the blinds in here. And so we're sitting there and we're going over the inspection report and all of a sudden the blinds go. <laughs> nice. We all just stopped and paused. We were like, are this they listening? Are it's they here. listening to us right now? Oh, okay. Yeah, <laughs> like, yeah. It was it was this sort of surreal moment that that happened in there. And so when we get into that, you know, know that you, it's okay to reach out to your agents and say, "Hey, there appears to be some smart home devices here. Is there any way, you know, I can get the the seller to go ahead and run the sprinklers through manual zone like when I text you back and say, "Go start, you know, run it through one system mode now." They love that communication and they can totally appreciate that. Okay. So you think it's perfectly okay. You're there and the sprinkler system doesn't work. And you just tell, you tell the agent, be like, Hey, you know, I need this sprinkler system ran. And normally the, I bet the sellers normally like, yeah, I'll run it for them from my office. <laughs> you know, it's like, it's almost like bragging rights, right? Yeah. They like, yeah, they don't have, they're like, yeah, sure. Oh yeah. I forgot about that thing. I forgot this was supposed to be the thing to do, you know? <laughs> yeah. um, so this next one that I'm on right here, we actually had an inspection. Um, our clients called us furious one time. We're very angry uh, because we, they accused us of telling the seller everything that we found. And it's like, nope, that's not how this works. That's not how we operate. And that's not what happened. Um, so I get to talking to my inspector and, and we're talking about the, the seller came home um, and he kind of just went in the back room, like far away from where they were talking. And so he made sure to like lower the volume of his voice. Uh, but he noticed that the Amazon Alexa, the little lights on the Alexa, all of a sudden started going round and round. So the Amazon device, and this is a little tip I want all you home inspectors to do out there. When you walk into a house you need to say, Alexa, play Imagine Dragons, or Alexa, how are you doing today? Or Siri, how are you doing today? And if it answers you back, know that you're probably being listened to. So the Amazon Echo specifically is an open-ended uh, software platform, meaning that you can design any kind of software to interact with it, and it's just open-ended. So um, people can, you, there's an app that you can just download and put on your Alexa that you can just listen in like a nanny cam to your Alexa. And so that's what happened with this guy is that he came in and he listened to our whole conversation via the Alexa and oh. we had no clue. And our buyers were furious. Um, and, th and that's exactly what it was. And we tried to tell him, it's like, Nope, we didn't say anything. Can you tell uh, it to turn off? So yeah, that's, that's what I would say. Alexa, turn off or go unplug it or <laughs> whatever it I, is. I have a home inspector that he thinks it's kind of funny where, you know, when we're testing plugs and I think he like, he unplugs the smart devices and he leaves them unplugged until he leaves. So that's yeah. what he does. He's like, I don't know. I'm just super paranoid. I'm like, that's all right. You know, you can definitely do that. Like, <laughs> it's not going to hurt anything. It's our job to test things and you put it back the way you left it. So 
I think it's Absol- fair. Absolutely. So when you get in there and you're like, Beep, now people will, if you know they're watching you and you get a quick phone call, then you know that seller is sitting there watching their video cameras and seeing you in the house and like, nope, I want you to turn this back on like right now. So as we get into our slideshow here, I'll get into a little bit more of that. So what we're looking at right here is the Google Home Hub. And that's this is kind of taken over the Alexa. Uh, I'm not going to play this video, but basically this thing can control your lights, um, your blinds, the oven, the thermostat, your ring video doorbell, and pretty much everything that's in the house. You can put your family photos so it scrolls up and you sees your uh, family pictures that are on there, stores your recipes so it knows what temperature to put your oven on and all that kind of fun stuff. So the, the deal is, is that this controls the house and this in real estate where we, we get into this sort of debacle that we're in right now. Um, do you remember when flat screen TVs first came out and that was like all the debate, like when I'm purchasing that house, the TV is stained because it's attached to the house and they're like, no, 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 no. The mounts are attached to the house, but the TV is not permanently attached and it's coming with us. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So that's I, I was, I was in the happening. Marine Corps then. Yeah. But I get that I was in the Marine Corps then. But the funny thing is, is like, I probably am going to leave my TV because there's like six holes behind there. <laughs> <laughs> so funny story about leaving your TV behind. We had a, a, one of the agents spoke up in one of our classes and was like, the, the buyers that moved into the house were still on their Netflix account. So because they went to, they got into their new house and they started like, you know, they'd pull up Netflix and all these really weird movies started showing up in their suggested. Oh, they forgot to log out. It was like, oh my gosh, they're using our Netflix. It's like, well, change your password. <laughs> it's not hard. Just change your password. That's but, some good advice. Yeah. You know, just, <laughs> yeah. just the, the little things that are there. Yeah. Um, something that's cool about this Google device is that there's no camera built into it. So Google wants you to be able to put it literally anywhere in your house without having to worry about someone hacking in and, and watching you and your bedroom or living room or wherever you are in your environment. It's about 150 bucks. And what I tell my agents is, you know, if they want to take this with them to their next house, cause it has all their family photos and recipes and that stuff on there, just go buy another one for 150 and leave them the new one. And then that way they can start over, but get ahead of this stuff before it happens. Cause I've had agents say, yes, that we, they moved out, but then they took their nest thermostat with them and they moved in and they had no way to turn on their heating and air because the homeowner, the previous homeowners took their nest thermostat with them. So these are all things that the real estate agents have to talk to and, and negotiate over when this happens. Um, one of the guys, I don't know, do you guys have star power in Houston? Uh, not that I'm aware of. Okay. So it's, Star Power is kind of just a big high-end kind of home automation company. Um, but one of the guys that were there, his, his name was Chris as well. But he told me something funny. He said, you know, our job is to make sure that there's no wall acne. I said, wall acne? Like, what the heck is that? <laughs> and so that's all these little buttons and switches and do- knobs and dials and all that kind of stuff. They just want to see like a real clean, what you're seeing on the right side, just a real clean screen and, and, and what you got going on there. So that's their yeah. thing. Um, I'm just going to roll through these like really fast, the types of controls and how do I legally transfer ownership as inspectors? When you see these buttons, do you push them all? Uh, we do try to turn stuff on. Yes. Like I, yeah. our, our goal, like whenever we're inspecting is to operate everything we can possibly can without damaging the property. I mean, you right. know, we even go as far as turning valves and turning things on and, but we always leave it back the way they had it. And we, you know, you don't just turn it on and walk away. You're like, what's happening after I turn this on? But you know what I mean? You know, but go ahead. So I was just going to say, so you have, you know, you show up to the inspection that has all these buttons, you know, and you can kind of see what it does. And I'm, and I'm like you, I'm going to attempt to push it and see what it does. Um, hopefully I don't hit like a reset button or something. And then I get a call from the listing agent going, my clients can't turn on their lights. <laughs> we don't want that to happen. Yeah. Uh, but what about these interfaces? Do you guys mess with these interfaces at all? I normally get it if the AC, I mean, if the ACs, I'm pretty intuitive because I grew up with this stuff. So yeah, I can normally figure out the AC controls pretty quick. So yes, I'll, I'll do my best to mess with it. But if I can't figure it out, I'd say within a five minute time frame, I got to move, move on. on. Yeah. Move on. Yeah. You and I are two peas in a pod, like move on. So you get into the smart lighting. Have you ever seen the the controls that are on the far left? It's getting washed out a little bit, but there's like a remote 
that controls your lighting and then there's the, the middle one is the wall and then the other one is from their phone. And so that's what this guy from Star Power said. He's like, a lot of times people, you know, we're, we're on our devices all the time. I want to be able to control my lights from my phone. I don't want to have to go to some thing that's on the wall. Yeah. Um, but then you have to transfer that over. Smart glass. Have you ever dealt with smart glass before? No, I didn't even know that was a thing. That looks pretty so, cool though. So on the, the left side here, um, that's the same picture, what you see in white. So when you step into the shower, the whole glass in the shower turns white. So you cannot see through the shower. That's just disappointing. That's the whole purpose <laughs> of glass so showers. Like they why use even these have applications it? like um, – if you're on like a high rise inner chaser and you got like the, the downtown oh. condo building and you don't want people to see you in your birthday suit, but they're all just driving by on the highway. Fair so they're enough. incorporating smart glass into these units. So you can come out and hit a button and it changes the opacity of the glass. So maybe you don't want anybody to see in and maybe you do want to see out like you in your birthday suit as the sun setting or whatever. No, I, I got you. So that makes sense in that application. Like it's a high rise. You have this bathroom like coated in windows. I got you. No, that makes yeah. sense. Yeah. So there's little sensors in there that, that control that. So if we run across that, I, I just want home inspectors to recognize that, hey, there's, did you know there's smart glass and you see wires and this little pad there and it'll change the opacity of the glass. Now, I'm not going to tell you what the opacity is. I'm not going to tell you what it was. All I'm going to do is see if it leaks or if it's broken and just, you know, your basic home inspection stuff. But I just want inspectors to be knowledgeable about when they see this, like, could be smart glass. Um, the other one are the blinds. That's the story that I told you a second ago where the agent texted over and said, boom, change, change the blinds over. Um, thermostat. So I told you the story about the, the sellers that took their thermostat with them. There's another story where uh, the sellers weren't very happy about the transaction and felt like they should have made more money than they did. And so <laughs> it's middle of summer and they move out and the seller still has the app on his phone. And so in the middle of the night, he has, he reprogrammed their thermostat to turn the heater on in the middle oh. of the night. So the buyers are like waking up in the middle of the night, just dripping sweat when the heater's on and they can't figure out like what is happening. So this is when the attorney that was on stage sort of got up and, and talked about that. And we'll get into that here in just a little bit. Oh, um, some of your other home automation stuff or like the sprinkler systems and mosquito misting systems. So um, that is a thing and that is totally there. Have yeah. you ever seen a little fin before what you see there on the, the pool? Uh, no, I actually have not seen that one yet. So that, that floats around in the pool. So inspectors, if you ever show up and you see little white floaty thing, it's, it's not chlorine that's in there. It is actually taking the temperature of the water. It can detect movement in the water. Um, it can tell you like your water chemistry to make sure that you need to be adding certain chemicals to the pool. So it's a really high end sort That's of feature. That's pretty cool, like, especially the movement in the pool. So you almost don't even need that expensive alarm. You can just throw that in there. Kids get in there, fall in. You get a, a notification on your and then phone. On your phone, you just pick it up. Oh, some of these kids are in the pool or kids are crashing the pool in the middle of the night. Yeah, but that, <laughs> but, you know, like. Yeah. You know, we live by our phone now. You could get out there. I mean, like I'm thinking like little, little kids, you know, you could react pretty quick if that, yeah. if that device works. So kind of moving on really fast, um, talking about transfer of ownership and this has nothing to do with inspectors, but um, basically when they go to the title company, they, they need to make sure that they're releasing all that stuff. And I've got some comments written here. We'll go through in just a second. Um, I wanted to talk about, I have a real estate agent who's a super techie guy and he, I inspected his house personally and he had all this crazy home automation stuff. And so I asked him to sit on this panel and he's works for a tech company and he's a part-time realtor, but he bought a house um, down in Burleson and it was kind of an Airbnb is the reason he purchased it. And it has a swimming pool. So he put cameras up on his swimming pool and on his front door and like no one's there, no one's scheduled to be there. And all of a sudden like he gets a notification that, Hey, like somebody's in my pool. So he was able to go through the app and talk over the, the camera to, it was some teenage kids that were staying at a couple houses down and they had just broke into his backyard. Well, they were jumping, they were getting on the roof of his house and jumping oh. off the roof into the swimming pool. And so he's like busting in, calling the cops and the parents of the kids were furious because he has a camera that watched their kids. And he's like, <laughs> 
well, watch this my is backyard. my property. I can put a camera wherever I want to, and it's not in any private place. So, you know, I'm trying to save your kid's life. But if you want them to splat on the ground, then okay, fire away. What <laughs> an odd thing to be upset about. It'd be like, you're, yeah. absent, you're, op- you're mad at the, uh, the wrong reason. <laughs> exactly. So, so I want inspectors to know this page right here, when the, the two upper pictures are cameras with audio. Okay, you've probably seen like the old school motion cameras. Well, now they they have that ring built in and you can actually talk back to whoever's there. So if you're getting a package delivered or whatever it is, uh, the Arlo in there, it's like the little magnetic mount that's there. That's live feed. They can talk to you. You can talk back and forth. The lower cameras are just your your pretty much your regular surveillance ca- cameras, except for the one that's on the far right. It's kind of a, look, a little R2-D2 looking one. If you see a round domed camera that someone's controlling that camera. So they have the ability to pan it left and right and up and down and all that kind of fun stuff. So know that if you see that camera, it's a manned camera with your guys, Chris, um, do you have uh, a moment where you say, don't say anything stupid ever in the house? Um, I would assume that you do. I do with my guys. Like, assume that you're being recorded in every room all the time, no matter what, right? You know, I have never said it, but I've I've done it through like representation. But I'm actually writing that down uh, right now. It's just like I've said stuff, and like someone started saying stuff, and I said, you know, like I just shake my head and I don't even say anything back, and I just yeah. like point at like an alexa or something and they're like holy shit i'm like yeah you're being watched all the yeah. time like all the time <laughs> so the uh i don't know if you've had to deal with this but like biometrics so the door locks facial recognition door locks uh i you know we're in the james bond era it's like reality this stuff is actually here the fingerprint one is probably a little bit more mainstream um, but there are some high end home builders that have that facial recognition and the, the eye scan, the iris scan. So just, we're not going to do anything about it, but you know, we want to educate you to know that it's there. Yeah. Quick fact too. If you do log in and you don't have the keypad number for that, the best thing you can do, and you don't really have a choice. I know it sucks, but you have to leave that door open, you know, yeah. because you're going in and out and you're going to get locked out of the house and you're going to set yourself an hour and a half behind and you know how that goes. Yeah, I know how that goes. So do you leave, do you always leave your key in the front door? Keep, leave it in the lock during the inspection? I do, but some of my uh, inspectors are too paranoid and they, they put it on the inside on the window seal or on the floor. But, yeah. but you know, true story. So I left it in the door once and I watched someone like take the key out and start wa- rocking away and I had to chase them down. Oh and looking gosh. back at it nowadays, I probably shouldn't have even done that because that guy was a lot bigger than me. And I, yeah. I just had that mil- military police uh, yeah. background. And I was like, I was, like from behind. I was just like yelled at him and he was like, that ain't my key. I'm like, and he started bringing it to me. I'm like, no, put it on the ground. You know, I made it sure he didn't come near me and stuff. <laughs> but yeah. it was just like, he was like, I didn't take the key. I'm like, sure you did it. I was like, yeah. But anyways, go ahead. Keep going. Yes. Yeah. So no, our, um, the video doorbell. So this is a very popular one. And when I teach this to agents, it's like, you know, you're being recorded when you, as soon as, um, do you have a video doorbell by the way? I do not No. Okay. So like the rule with my, my parents is, is like, I'm never allowed to buy them technology. Like my mom and dad, they just get frustrated. So it's like, that was always the rule. Don't ever buy us technology. And I'm like, all right, cool. So my parents, you know, they're getting in retirement. They're kind of move out to the lake house. And so they've got both houses going back and forth. And so I just bought them the ring doorbell and I was like, ah, please, I hope this goes okay. And they love it. They absolutely love it. And my mom can tell you about every neighborhood cat. She can tell you exactly (laughs) when the postman came. She can tell you exactly every car that went up and down the street because you can set the sensitivity to it for how many yards out it actually picks something up and it sends you a signal back. So she sends it all the way out. (laughs) Yeah. I always tell agents like if you are get if you're showing houses, tell your clients as soon as they get out of the car, assume that you're being recorded. Um, Story that happened to us one time. It was a, it was a new construction and uh, I had two inspectors on this house. It was kind of a bigger house 
and the shower pan failed. So we do the shower pan test and water starts from the second floor, starts to come through the ceiling and down to the first floor. And so the inspector that's doing the outside of the house, you know, inspector that's inside the house runs outside by the ring doorbell um, and says, hey, the shower's flooded. I need you to get in here and help me. Well, the builder is the one that had access to the, the ring doorbell. And so he heard the inspector say, hey, the shower flooded. This is what it is. And so just because they got us on video of this, my inspector saying that this builder was trying to pin us with, you know, fixing the damages of what happened. It's like, well, no, you're, you're, you've got a hole in your shower pan and sorry that, you know, it failed under testing this is on you. But just because of that ring doorbell, he just thought he had such great, you know, things that were there. And it's like, sorry, man, you've got a busted thing. And if you would have told me it was broken, I wouldn't have tested it. But that's what inspections are, are for, unfortunately. So just when you have these ring doorbells, uh, what I tell clients is like, make sure either we want to take a picture of that doorbell uh, and make sure that we're putting it into our report because if they try to swap it out or they take a different one with them, you at least want to make sure they're getting the same make and model and all that kind of fun stuff. Oh, that so, makes sense because it's attached, right? Yeah. So yeah. we'll get into some of that here in a little bit, but do, do you have your inspectors hit the magic button on the ring doorbells or no? Uh, we just hit, I mean, if there's a button, we push the button, you know, that's, I don't know what the magic button is, but. Well, no, yeah, you're just hitting the button to see if it's like, dun, 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 and it's yeah. like calling somebody or not. Yeah. So, and when we get into the comment section here in a second, we'll kind of get into more about that doorbell. This is this craziest slide I have. So the, all of these things right here are recording devices with audio. Okay. Do you see that? Do you see the outlet? Yeah, that's nuts. Yes, yeah. that absolutely freaked me out. It's not a functional outlet but it has recording device and it has a thing in there that picks up audio. The other one, it might be a little bit faded out with your screen, but that's a smoke detector. It's a first alert smoke detector. So it yes, records yeah. audio and video. Yeah. So that looks why, just like a smoke alarm. Yeah. It looks just like a smoke alarm or the coffee maker or the docking station or alarm clock. Um, so we talked about speakers. So one thing that's happening is, an agent can negotiate to have all listening devices turned off during the option period. No agents are exercising that right, but they do have the right to say, hey, I want you to turn off all the security systems during the inspection so I can make sure that you're not using any of this information against me. So that's something that we try to, um, you know, teach that to agents that they do have that right. So I know we've got a lot of inspectors out here. This is just the state of Texas. Um, so our rules, um, so one of the lawyers that I brought on the stage was actually a, a PI and a divorce attorney. So he helped write this law in 2017. Um, both the Federal Electronic Communications Privacy Act, the EPCA, and Section 1602 of Texas Penal Code prohibit audio recordings without the consent of at least one party of the conversation. So in other words, if you're recording me and I don't give you my consent, and the, you're, the sellers are there, they don't give their consent, you can't legally use any of this information. So I, had, I was teaching this class one time to a broker and he, um, he tells me, he's like, Clayton, I just had one the other day where the seller's calling me and he's like, hey, the inspector can't find the switch to turn on the pool light. It's right over there. Call him and tell him that it's there. And so he's like, I called. And I was like, well, you just broke the law. <laughs> he didn't know it. And so that's kind of what we're up against in this world right now. Uh, is going through all that stuff. Yeah, even though he's being helpful, it's it's still wrong. What's the penalty for it, though? I mean, like, really, when you're thinking about it, you know, what what's the punishment? There's, I mean, nothing, right? And so I'm going to fly through these really fast, but this is basically like in the MLS where smart home devices are, and this is mostly for real estate agents, um, where you're going to find it in the MLS and, the, and what – rules and, and they have so and just I'll read one of these really fast when viewing a property client might be recorded or otherwise monitored without the client's knowledge or consent additionally consult an attorney before recording or photographing a property without the owner's knowledge or consent part of this started back in the day when social media got big and people were showing houses and they were just taking pictures of people's artwork and then putting it on their Facebook and it was making people mad so now there, now it's kind of flipped and it's, it says, hey, I'm recording you and, and I could do this. And so TAR, Texas Association of Realtors, has, has covered this, but it's still kind of the wild, wild west on a, on a lot of this stuff. 
So smart appliances. This is, um, there's all kinds of crazy new features that are out there. One of the things um, that I learned is that the if you move into a house, you have to do a factory reset on these smart appliances. Have you ever seen one of the, the Samsung, the TV? I almost bought that actually because it looked so awesome, but I was like, I just can't spend an extra thousand dollars on the refrigerator. <laughs> It's pretty, it's pretty cool. Um, there's a commercial that I play that, that's, that's here where it plays their commercial and it says all the stuff that this thing does. And it, it is just absolutely nuts. Yeah, the it things connects, that do. connects to Amazon. You can order your milk right from it. You can do, yes. you can do whatever. So you want. here's the yeah. thing. Each one of these appliances will only, every manufacturer out there, you can only do five factory resets. Oh, before you have yeah. to what, call a technician or something? Bef no, before it's just done. You cannot use that appliance anymore after that. So it so, can only belong to five people? Exactly. So oh, if you no. find a smart appliance, like in an apartment or like in a lease type situation, it's like, that's the dumbest thing they ever could have done. So this takes you into the smart ovens. Um, this one is a, talking about smart garage door operators. Um, are your appliances listening to you? So you can actually, there's apps out there where people can hack their TVs and, and watch other people through their TVs. And so this is a video that I would normally play that goes through and says, how to not do that? You know, this honestly, I was at an Airbnb the other day uh, whenever we were in, at ASHI, right? The uh, inspector world. And yeah, yeah. I was, there was TVs in the bedroom and there were smart TVs. And I was like, no, you know, I was like, these TVs are watching, you know, I was like, they could watch me if they wanted to. I don't know if they are, you know, and most people are too busy for that, but if they're weirdos, they would watch me. You, you know? never like, know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I feel like, you know, ever since in Batman where he hacked into everybody's cell phone, yeah. and see everything that was across the screen, our government totally does that right now. Oh. And they do. Right. <laughs> and, and that's the Snowden thing. That's what they were trying to, like he was trying to talk about, but you know, I would like to think that it keeps us our, sovereign soil safe from foreign you know terrorists and they're using it for the better good of, of things hopefully yeah um appliances so did you know that dishwashers ovens ranges that have smart home features that is because builders this happens to them all the time they yeah. will um go ahead and put their appliances in that morning and then by that afternoon they're gone, they're gone yeah right so new appliances have a tracking device and it sends an alarm to the builder that says hey your appliances have moved more than 18 inches you need to get to that house because someone's stealing your appliances that's pretty badass that's that pretty awesome very cool so I, I love that so this part's just kind of talking about um from the builder's perspective um you know building more green more energy efficient and that's kind of how they do it uh I'm going to escape out of this and I'm going to go over to my comments because this is really what I want you guys to know um, as inspectors. And so going through some of this is repetitious, but some of it's not. So we talk about the smart home device, like the Amazon, the Alexa or whatever it is. So smart home device, there was a smart home controller device at the time of the inspection. The inspector did not test the functionality of this device on the day of the inspection. It is recommended to inquire further with the homeowner on what the device controls in the home. So that's one of the comments that we're going to drop in there. Yeah. So hold on. I think honestly, cause I know you want to sell these comments and mm -hmm. I say you just give them a taste. Give them a taste. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So that was an awesome comment because we run across that and then you're, I don't think we documented that as well as we should, you know, yeah. like, so going down, like I'm going to just roll through these. I don't know if they can see my screen or not, but uh, like doorbell. This home appears to have a smart home doorbell. Please note the inspector used this device and someone did or did not answer. Like I'm going to put that in my pick oh, list. You, you have a pick list to right. determine if they, uh, yeah, that's cool. Yeah, that makes uh, sense. Also the, the thing that, and I put this on pretty much every one. It's just a note that says, um, the inspection company did not consent to being recorded by audio or video during the course of the inspection. It is the intention of the inspection company to not reveal any of the inspection findings to the seller via a smart home device. So right there, we're CYA in that little scenario that happened to us where the guy listened to us and we didn't know. So at least if we can tell this, the buyers that, hey, there's something there that may or may not be going on. Yeah, that's, uh, that's pretty cool. So uh, whenever 
the, yeah, I mean, those comments are perfect. So you kind of get the idea of what he's hitting at here. And I know he wants to sell these comments. So how much are, are you thinking that you want to run these for? Have you came up with the price yet? Uh, I mean, I don't want it to be anything too crazy, but, you know, probably in that 150 realm. Yeah, I think that's a fair. That's actually literally what I was thinking. You know, you should probably drop them down because people can just sit there and <laughs> write them down if they want. <laughs> but, uh, no, I think the 150 range, I think that's a lot of experience in there. And also, you know, one of the things that I was talking to a home inspector the other day about the comments that we sell or the comments my father sells, it's just like, you are getting 20 plus years of experience through these comments and that turns you into a really good home inspector. Like, yeah. yeah. That was the first time, like when I got, uh, cause I bought my original comments from your dad and my library is like way, way different than it was then. But back then I was like, man, I didn't even know that was a thing. Like right. I didn't even know that that was something. Right. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I am in the in the process of like coaching a like a newer home inspector, and then he like wanted to go out and do home inspections. And hey, yeah, he has a license, but I was like, listen, man, you're not a home inspector yet. You know, you need a you need a product. And so I hooked him up with the comments and the uh, and the templates. I'm like, go and inspect your own home. Use this, make it match mine. And then after you get a base, you could go as crazy as you want. I don't care, but you need a base. You know, yeah. a start, a start. And I start think somewhere. I, yeah, start somewhere. So that's cool. You know, that's so awesome. the and I'll just kind of hit on the the headers and not necessarily talk about the the comments, but I, I do want to talk about one of these. Do you ever have the the builders lock you out of the thermostat, or they won't let you yes. change it by more than a certain amount? So oh, there's yeah. a com there's a comment that we came up for that specifically. Um, and, and or if there's no Wi-Fi, you know, it's like well, it's not going to run because it needs Wi-Fi. Um, what about the smart kitchen sink faucet? Well, that will, if you tap it, it comes on. Yeah. I don't, I mean, it normally works for us or if you walk in front of it. Right. So it could be, um, the, the, you wave your, like the new ones out, you can wave your hand in front mm -hmm. of it. Um, there's one that's like the Alexa is, it says, you know, Alexa, give me one cup of water and you hold your bowl like right below it and it, it exactly meters out one cup of water. No, it doesn't. No, yeah. it doesn't. <laughs> That's, that's awesome, man. You just you removed a whole that. you removed a whole cup out of my out of my out of my cabinet. <laughs> <laughs> Probably so, yeah, for like but, three hundred dollars, but <laughs> But I don't want I don't want people to think that, you know, we are responsible for making sure that you're actually getting one cup of water. So I'm gonna do something uh, that's kind of CYA to say, hey, I'm just gonna run it like a normal person would. It's got all these other fancy bells and whistles, so that's yeah. outside of, of what we do, and I'm, I'm not going to go but, there. But have you really had, I guess they would call this person a, Car a Karen, but would they really call in and say, my, my Alexa does not measure out one cup of water. I, I just don't see that happening. But you, you never know. You, I have met that person, Chris. <laughs> and they're a, it's a terrible person to deal with, but, but they're out there. You know, it's funny <laughs> on my website, it says, you know, we provide home inspections and free uh, termite inspections, but it doesn't say free termite inspection with the price of a home inspection. <laughs> and we just had someone recently call in and be like, she's like, no, I, I want this free termite inspection. And, you know, Trevor was like, sorry, you know, it, it's with the, it's with the purchase of the home inspection. She's like, if no, it, you need to give it to me. It says it, it's free. I want it. And he's like, sorry, that's, you know, that's not going to happen. She's like, I'm going to speak to the owner. And Trevor called me. He's like, Hey, you know, do you want this uh, thing? You know, do you, how do you want to handle this? I was like, just hang up on her. Yeah. <laughs> and he was like, what? Yeah. But he, but that's, what's good. He's a professional phone call taker and he did it. Yeah. He didn't hang up on her. He like handled it real professional. And I was like, that's why I don't answer phones. You know, it's just, <laughs> I'll just hang up so on her. And I don't know, here, here's a golden nugget for you audience out there. But when you get that irate client, that's like just super mad and there's nothing that you can do and they scream and they curse and they holler. And so they'll, they'll call our team. Right. And they'll call one of the guys and they call me and say, Hey, this person's not happy calling back. They screamed at us, yelled at us. So I'll call them. And if they start screaming and yelling at me, you know, 
I, I try to be a logical and a reasonable person. And I tell you that if you're coming at me with like daggers and fists and guns and like, I'm like, hold on, wait a minute. Your, your emotional level is way up here. All right. I understand you you have frustration. Let's talk through this in a reasonable and logical way. And if they still continue to yell, cause I warned them, I said, Hey, I'm trying to be reasonable and logical and help you with your scenario. If you still want to continue to scream and yell, I'm going to tell you, I'm going to hang up the phone now and I will talk to you tomorrow after you have calmed down from the emotional state that you're in and we will have a reasonable and logical conversation. And bloop, <laughs> hang up. Damn it. And, and you just talk to him tomorrow. Yeah. It's the best feeling. And you know, nine times out of 10, that when you talk to him the next day, they've calmed down and they're like, I'm sorry. I'm so sorry for being a jerk yesterday. I'm like, yeah. I'm the answer to your problems. Don't yell at me. You know? Yeah, don't, I'm trying to help you here. I'm the one that's like trying to figure this thing out with you. So it's okay. People like to say, I'm going to hang up on you. Cause you get that people, you just get people that are in that irate state that you're never going to see. I don't know if you can read my badge or not, but at the bottom it says home therapist. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, that's funny because I do tell people, I'm like, you, you don't just navigate the home. You navigate through this, you know, this emotional storm that's happening. And I tell people this fact all the time, the most, one of the most, um, emotional time of people's lives are, are buying a home and they've even compared it to being even more stressful than divorce. So it's it, kind of crazy. It's crazy. It is. And I try to, t I teach a personalities class too, to real estate agents. And you know, people are just in that fight or flight mentality when it's all their money on the line yeah, and money. they they're nervous and their parents are breathing down their neck or somebody else is breathing down their neck. And telling them, well, you should have done this and you should. Have. And so everybody's in this like fight or flight mentality, you know, and, and it's just a natural way. And, and we as the inspectors have to recognize, okay, that's the crazy one over there. I need to make sure I'm very calm and collective, but all right, the, the husband, like he's just cool and I can talk to him like a more normal person. And you, and you just have to read them and recognize who you're about to step in the ring with. <laughs> you want to stop sharing your screen? Yeah. So we can, yes. Yeah. So, uh, you know, that's, that's awesome. So, you know, Clayton, I know you have Facebook and you, you have Instagram and I don't know, do you have a YouTube? I can't remember. I do. I'm you not do. as strong as you are. That's kind of my goal for 2020 is to start cranking out some more stuff on YouTube. Do you don't, do IGTV? Oh yeah, of course. I do everything, man. Yeah. I, the only thing I don't mess with too much is like TikTok. I have like a TikTok, but it's like personal use because the average user of TikTok is like 22 and below, you know, yeah. and they're not buying homes. They're poor, you know, like they, I might, I might fire that up 10 times, you know, in 10 years or something, but it'll be dead by then. Yeah. Um, but yeah. So how do they find you, you know, out there? So green scene home inspections, uh, or just simply, if you want to go check our website out, it's G S H I dot C O. Um, if you want a friend request me on Facebook, it's Clayton Bailey and you'll see probably, you know, green guy and green glasses and a, and a funny suit. Um, yeah, hit us up. Nice. So did you have a, do you have an, uh, Instagram? I do. It's Clayton Lee Bailey. Okay. All right. On nice. Instagram. Yeah. Yeah. Nice. All right. Sweet. So that is Clayton Bailey and he is going to be teaching a class in the future with Rets probably. I, I don't know if dates have been set into place, but it's going to be a more detailed version of that for home inspectors. It's not yeah. really just built for real estate agents because whenever, you know, real estate agents, we kind of just touch on it because they just need to know enough to be dangerous. You know, they don't really need to know the inner workings of it. So that's, yeah. that's nice. And um, so that's it. Yeah. So no. that's the, Go ahead. No, I was just going to say my goal for the class, for the RETS class, is to really have more pictures of the physical devices so that okay. inspectors can say, what's that square thing on the wall or what's that round piece of plastic on the wall? I don't know what that is. And so that's my goal is to say there's clues in there that help you pick up on what this house is. And so we want to give you all those clues. Nice. And I, I keep forgetting to broadcast this. I don't know why, but like I do, uh, I am the home inspection whisperer dates are out. You can go to the home inspection whisperer.com and it is going to be a fantastic event, I believe, because 
it's not going to be like your normal Rets classes. It's, it's a little bit of everything. You know, we have, we have real estate agents, we have coming in, talking to you. So you're going to have Q and A's with them. We're going to teach you how to do the difference between LLC and S corps. We're going to teach you about social media. We have Paul Zach teaching you about time management. We're going to have someone even teaching them how to do financial management. So, you know, or not financial management, reading credit card statements. You know, whenever you have those credit card people in, he's going to teach you how to read it and what all those charges mean. I saw mine the other day and I was like, what the (laughs) hell? (laughs) What is this? So that's what I reached out to him and he was like, yeah, I'll teach there. So we have, we have a few people trickling in now. I didn't realize this, but my dad was teaching me a little bit more about it. People really do wait to the last minute with, with these type of things. And that blows my mind because if I know I'm going to something, I signed up like months out. And I, yeah. have, I have the months out people signed up. I know they're hustlers and they're going to, they're going to come there, but I need more than like just the bare minimum. I, you know, I want, I want to teach you guys and I want to show you how to run, you know, the way I run and at the intensity level I run at all times. <laughs> so, you know, I want, I want to show people even, you know, what it takes to be a, a, a mass producer, I would say massive action. Yeah. You, you got to be a hustler and get after it and constantly just keep churning and burning yeah. and going and blowing. Every day. Every day. Every it's every day. day. I literally <laughs> sit down with Mary at the end of the day. I write down like, I'm like, hey, all right, this is what I am going to do tomorrow. And she'll be like, hey, you need to do this. And I write it down. I'm like, cool. And boom, I just do get as far through that list as I possibly can. And if I can't, it gets bumped up to the top. And then we work our way through there. But So I, my wife and I, we have a very similar thing. I'll just kind of show it to you really fast. But uh like you know you're you're on there for today so here's here's our little planner and it has like you, what are your critical things what are your other things here's your day and then it, i can take notes on the other side and then every day we sync up and we say okay how'd that go or what'd this go uh, nice. what happened here and we we created something called event sheets and you might want to do this too so if you have a speaking gig or you're paying to play at an office or do a luncheon or whatever it is we print out like what we call a little event sheet and we say who was there, how many people showed up, what was the food, what pants did I know it sounds weird to say what pants did I wear, but I don't (laughs) want to wear the same pants like to that office again. So what food it was, what pants I wore, what class. And so that way we just log that, categorize that into base camp. And then that's hilarious. You got a, a pants in your Excel sheet. That's pretty funny. <laughs> we do we do track like how many uh, how we met the agents and you know where we got them and then uh, if they sent us work and if they didn't you know why when's the last time we touched we do keep track of that kind of stuff but that's awesome that's yeah. cool. all right anyways cool. we'll end, yeah we'll end the show right there thanks again Clayton uh, for coming on to the show and then. Uh, I, if you have something else like this, I think this is a pretty cool gig, you know, uh, let me know if you want to teach. Cool. Them. Yeah. And so, Absolutely. Happy, right, to, so, happy to be on the show again. So that's Chris with uh, a action, the home inspection whisperer. And we got Clayton Bailey, uh, the green scene home inspections and I catch us on the next one. Thanks guys. Bye. whisperers. Bye. Yeah. Bye. <laughs>